I'm recording. So thank you for joining us tonight. We had some technical difficulties and now we are off to a running start. We have a lot of information to get through tonight. So I am going to dive right in. Our topic tonight is how to choose the right realtor. Honestly, I think one of the best topics of our seminar series. So I'm excited and I have a lot of information to share. This is, you know, the subtopics are going to be what you should expect from your realtor and what to look for in a realtor. And we will talk about both buying and selling. So a little bit first about who I am. That's me, I'm Kristen Mason Correas. I am owner and lead realtor for the Homes by Mason team. And I am a top producing realtor in the area. I am top 1% nationwide. I am best of Zillow and things like that. So I have been in the business for 10 years and do about, my team does about 30 to 40 transactions a year. So I enjoy what I do a lot and I'm excited to do these seminars and help people learn about the process of buying and selling. So first and foremost, a realtor should be your professional consultant. We do much more than help people find homes or stick a sign in the yard, right? So there's a lot more behind the scenes and Rebecca actually joined our team last year and was new to real estate and she has learned very quickly that there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that people don't realize. And so we are professionals and we are experts and there are lots of potholes and lots, um, lots of things to navigate through this process. And so we are your guide through that process to get you through without falling into a pothole, which often can and does happen more times than we like to admit. So the process starts with listening to your wants and needs. And this is for both buyers or sellers. So these things here apply to if you're buying or selling. So once we know what your wants and needs are, then we are able to establish a strategy for you. Whether that's buying or selling, we're going to take what you tell us and then put you on the right path, okay? And hold your hand through that path. And sometimes the path changes as we go. And that's our job, again, to always make sure that we are keeping in, uh, in sync with your wants and needs. And also we're gonna explain the steps of the process to you ahead of time. So answer those questions up front, like we're doing here in, in our seminar series, so that you know what to expect through the process. We will also connect you to trusted vendors. So because we sell 30 to 40 homes a year, we have relationships with all the different types of vendors involved with buying or selling a home. Home inspectors, electricians, title, carpenters, painters, carpet guys. So we have long-standing relationships with these people and they like to keep in good standing with us because they know that we will often have lots of people to refer them to. So we are able to connect you to our trusted vendors and ultimately set you up for success, right? That's really the goal and what, we, what a good realtor should do for you. So then we've got the selling process. A realtor working for you to help you sell your home is again, first and foremost, going to establish strategy for you. Um, timing is important, right? So if you call me today and tell me that you want to sell your home, you know, we could just say, okay, we're going to put it on the market whenever you're ready. That is not the best strategy. Okay. So considering what is going on in the market, consider, you know, looking at the calendar and considering, you know, starting with, okay, what needs to be done to the home? So that's where we do start. So a realtor will walk through your home and take a look and assess possible improvements and repairs to make that will help you get the best price for your home. Once a realtor does that, then a realtor should be able to determine, help determine the timeline it will take for you to make any recommended improvements and repairs. And then around that decide, okay, this is when we will list and usually avoid things like holidays, for example. So listing on a holiday weekend is not a good strategy because buyers are more focused on the holiday than they are buying a property. So that's an example of strategy and timing. And then they're going to determine a pricing strategy 
as well. So there are different aspects to that to price differently, again, depending upon if the market is increasing or if the market is decreasing, depending upon the trends in the market. So a good realtor is going to do all of those things on the front end. And then we get into stage one. So stage one is what I refer to as preparing the home for the market. So this is largely the owners doing work to prepare for the market after we've established the strategy with you. And the realtor during that time is going to, again, connect you with trusted vendors to help you do that work. A uh, good realtor is going to check on your progress to make sure that you are keeping on timeline for that listing date, that best listing date that they discussed with you, and sometimes even lend a hand. So certainly me and my team members have been known to roll up our sleeves and go over to the house and lend a hand if push comes to shove and we are off timeline and, you know, if you just need a hand packing some boxes or, um, Clean out their attic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Rebecca has cleaned out an attic for clients. So um, a good realtor will go above and beyond for sure. And then also we'll be watching the market activity because markets can shift and change, you know, on a moment's notice, of course. And so, you know, perhaps we had a great strategy and timeline in place and then something changes in the market. And uh, we might then advise that, perhaps we want to list sooner or list later based upon what's happening in the market. So, and, and the price that we had discussed initially also might change depending upon what's happening in the market. Sometimes I see homes get listed at a certain price and I look at it and I wonder if that listing agent was aware of a home that listed like the week before you know it's like sometimes i see this price and i'm like yeah that was the price a month ago but not after last what happened last week in the market so a realtor does need to be paying attention all the time and staying on top of that market activity and a realtor will be preparing the marketing materials while you are preparing the house so the marketing materials are what we use to get buyers through the door and kind of the Average agent, we uh, in the industry will say, does the three P's. They put a sign in your yard, put it in the multiple listing service, and pray that someone else sells it for you. That's the basics of what a realtor can do as a listing agent. And when you're working with a good realtor, there's a lot more that goes into the process to get the right buyers through the door and to get your home sold for the highest possible price in the least amount of time and the least inconvenience possible. So it starts with those marketing materials and they should again be more than just putting in the MLS and putting a sign in the yard. Our process at Homes by Mason starts with a coming soon stage. We have guidelines that tell us we the soonest we can start marketing a property is 21 days before our list date and so we take advantage of that time period and we have a plan in place where we start marketing 21 days before our list date we are pushing out information to consumers we are pushing out information to realtors to let people know that this property is coming on the market and uh, our, what we want to do is get people lined up at the door, right? So we don't want to just go live and then wait for people to find it. We want people to know about it before it's on the market. And open houses is another important way to get buyers through the door. Now, a lot of realtors will tell you that open houses don't work. I hear that. And honestly, I think that's a convenient myth for many realtors. I do open houses all of the time and I have two beautiful kids and a wonderful husband at home who I would love to spend more time with on the weekends. However, my job as a realtor is to get the most people through my listings as possible and open houses help accomplish that. Most people start searching online and what do they do next? They start going to open houses. So in my opinion and in my experience, open houses do work, especially when done the right way, uh, which includes marketing those open houses well. So, and also open houses are not limited to only Sundays. 
So we, on the first weekend of Home is on the Market, we do open houses Saturday and Sunday. And then also we actually um, will often do a neighbor's open house on the Thursday before it goes on the market as well. So we take advantage of opening the doors to get people through the, the house. After people see the home, it doesn't stop there. Okay, so if people aren't giving us an offer right away, we are following up and asking for feedback. Asking these buyers, are they interested in the property? And if not, why not? You know, if there is something that people are seeing that we didn't see, or if there is something that people don't like about a property, we want to know about that sooner rather than later and be able to make changes quickly. So getting that follow-up and feedback is also critically important that a realtor should be doing for you. And then reviewing offers. So once we do get offers in, so a realtor could just pass the contract to you and say, here you go, right? And there are some realtors who do that. Here's the contract, what do you wanna do? A good realtor is going to first review that offer with a fine tooth comb, looking at not only the price, but also the terms and explaining to you the pros and cons of that offer. And also screening that offer in two ways. The realtor who presented the offer and the lender who has pre-qualified the buyer are two critical players in this process of getting to closing. And they're not all the same. There is a difference in realtors and there is a difference in lenders. And so, a good listing agent is going to check the experience of a realtor, we have access to do that, and call a lender and ask about the pre-qualification and ask about their experience to make sure that we are working with professionals who will be able to get the job done well and as expected. And again, negotiate the best price and terms, we'll talk about negotiating here shortly. So, in terms of what applies on both sides for buying and selling, a realtor should always be looking out for your best interest, okay? And time is of the essence in real estate. And so as realtors, we are essentially on call 24 hours a day. Again, that's not the, <laughs> that is not the fun, sexy part of our job. However, it is a reality that real estate does not stop for me and my family. So we do have to be available around the clock and you wanna make sure that you're working with a realtor who is available to you nights and weekends as well. And so again, on the buy, either buying or selling, what happens when you get under contract to get to closing, there's a, that's where I talked about earlier that there's lots of potholes and pitfalls that you could fall into um, between contract and closing. And so, your realtor should not disappear. <laughs> and I have known, in fact, the first time I bought a home before I was a realtor, my realtor just disappeared after we were under contract and I had no idea what was happening. This is a very critical part of the process where your realtor or your realtor's team should be in communication with all parties to the contract regularly uh, to make sure that everyone is doing what they need to do as expected on time to get to an on-time closing. And also a realtor is gonna coordinate inspections for you on either side and make sure that, um, again, you have a trusted home inspector if you need that and pest inspector and things like that and make sure that uh, everyone's schedule coordinates. Again, there's multiple people involved, the buyer, the realtor, and the inspectors coordinating all of those steps to the piece. You don't need to do that. Uh, sometimes, you know, people will say, do I need to schedule a pest inspection? No, our, a good realtor is going to manage that for you. Advise you through the negotiations. Uh, again, not just pass you the contract and say, what do you want to do? But evaluate the offers and advise you in terms of what they think a good response would be based upon their experience. So, also a good realtor is going to keep in touch after closings. We at Homes of Mason, you'll hear me talk about this later, we, it's such an intimate experience to help people buy or sell a home. And so it feels like family. And we at Homes of Mason do feel like a family and we treat our clients like family. And so when the deal is done, we don't want to lose touch. And 
we want to keep in touch. And again, especially because of that trusted vendor piece, you know, you, our clients always have access to us and our, our trusted vendors, even after closing and any questions about real estate at any time, a good realtor should be available to answer questions for you um, and your colleagues or friends whenever you have questions. So the negotiating piece, that's a big part of this process, right? So buying or selling, you want to have a good negotiator working for you. How will you know, or, or what are the pieces to a good negotiator? A good negotiator understands the wants and needs of both parties, right? So if they're working for you, they want to know your wants and needs and they wanna to try to find out what are the wants and needs of the other side. They're always going to be trying to get to a win-win solution and you can only do that when you know what are the wants and needs. And so therefore to find that out from the other side, a realtor needs to ask the right questions. So they're gonna be going through the other party's realtor in asking these questions and knowing what questions to ask. So for example, how quickly you know, if it's a buyer talking to a listing agent, when do your clients want to move? Where are they moving to? Do they need to stay in the home after closing? What's important to your clients in a contract? These are the types of questions that your realtor should be asking the other realtor in order to be able to negotiate well for you and write you opening contract. So in negotiating, it sometimes will be uncomfortable and challenging. And so you do want to have a realtor who can and will be comfortable having difficult conversations. That's gonna be a sign of a good negotiator. And someone who's able to think outside the box. So it's not just about price in real estate. That certainly is one of the most important pieces, but there are terms to the contract as well that matter. And so when we have a client who you know, perhaps reaches their max on price, but really wants the home, then we're gonna think outside the box and discuss other strategies and other ways that we can help make their offer strong that is not just about the price. A good negotiator is gonna know when to walk away. So sometimes negotiations just stall out. And uh, so a good negotiator will, you know, a good realtor will advise you um, that, you know, the other side doesn't seem like they're budging anymore. And if you have hit the end of your limit, then a good realtor is going to walk away. They should not be thinking about their commission. They should be thinking again about you and your best interests. So ultimately a good realtor is going to get you the best deal, either save you money when you're purchasing or make you money on the listing side. So you want to, you know, really screen uh, your realtors, right? It's the, one of the, most, the biggest financial transactions of your life. So take it seriously and screen for these things. And we're gonna talk about questions to ask here shortly. What to look for in your realtor. Bottom line, you want to have a realtor who you can trust, who has the right experience, the right market knowledge, and gets the right results, right? So how will you be able to identify those things? In order to find someone that you can trust, if it's someone that you do already know, or someone who is known by someone that you know, that is a good indication that you will be able to trust them. But don't stop there. I want to really stress that because I'll even use myself as an example. So the very first time I purchased a property before I was in real estate, I knew someone at my job who was also a realtor part-time and it didn't occur to me that this person had a full-time job that was not real estate, but it was someone who I knew through work. So there was a trust there. Um, and so I used that person as my realtor to buy my first home. I still have that home because it really was not the best purchase and really hasn't appreciated like it should have. And I think I paid too much for it, honestly because when I look back now, I don't think that I chose the right realtor for that transaction, but I chose someone that I trusted. So trust is important, but it is not the only end all be all. Um, 
start the relationship early, right? So screen realtors early, do those consultations that we talked about early and then stay in communication. See if the realtor does stay in communication, keep in touch with you, right? Through that longer term relationship, you will then determine whether you can trust this person or not. Check references. That of course is another good way to find out if you can trust someone. I give out a list of uh, referrals, right? That people can call and I say, ask them, you know, does Kristen do what she says she's gonna do? Is she, you know, really all of these things that she says? You know, so that's another way that you can see if it's, if the realtor is someone that you can trust. So the right experience. Length of time in the business is one thing, but it is not the only thing. So again, that realtor that I referred to who was a full-time realtor, I'm sorry, he had a full-time job and was a part-time realtor. He is, I don't know if he's still a realtor now, but if he is, he's been in the business a really long time, but he hasn't been doing the number of transactions that a full-time realtor does. So it's not only about length of time in the business, that's one thing that you wanna ask about, but also how many transactions is the realtor doing? So ask that question, you know, in the past 12 to 24 months, how many transactions have you closed? And ask about the specific transaction that you are doing, because listing a home is a very, very different transaction than helping people buy a home. Like really they're night and day. So ask specifically how much experience, how many, how much experience or how many transactions have you done helping buyers buy or helping sellers sell? And then market knowledge. You ideally want a realtor who knows the trends and nuances of your market and again, your type of transaction, okay? Because they are different. So selling or buying a condo is very different than a detached home. And then there's the luxury market. So these are different um, types of markets. Again, you want to ideally have a realtor who knows how to work in the type of market that you are gonna be buying or selling in. Results. So ask about results. One thing is that listing a home does not equal selling a home. So if a realtor tells you that they've listed so many homes, ask how many they've actually sold, okay? So if you listed it and didn't sell it, well, that's not a statistic that you wanna know. That's not a good result. And so the types of statistics that I track that I think most realtors in most areas will be able to track for themselves are days on market. So when you're selling a home, when you're listing a home, how many days on market does it take for you on average to sell a home as a listing agent? And the sold price to original list price. So how close to the asking price? That is another statistic that um, I know we can track in our area that probably most realtors are able to track. So those are two important statistics if you're interviewing a realtor to list your home that I would ask about. I do wanna to touch on the difference between an individual realtor and a team. I have been both. So when I started in the industry, I was an individual realtor and now I have a small team. So there are pros and cons to both in my opinion. As an individual realtor, if you are doing a lot of business and if you are doing everything yourself, you get stretched very, very thin. And um, you, it's, it will be hard to have the right energy to do everything at a high level for your clients as an individual realtor with no help or support doing a lot of business. So I don't think that is a good equation, honestly. And again, when I started doing a lot of business, I realized that, again, I was getting stretched so thin and my quality of work was going down. So that was when I decided that I wanted to get support. So if you're gonna work with an individual realtor, ask that question and find out if they have administrative and marketing support. If they do, then they're not gonna be stretched as thin. And also ask the question about how many clients do they carry, right? So um, as an individual agent, I would say five is um, manageable. More than that, and again, you know, there, there may be some mitigating 
um, factors there. But point is that obviously if an individual agent has lots and lots of clients, they're not going to be able to give you the attention that they need. Now with a team, the, again, I think one of the benefits of working with a team is that there are different people in different roles who are able to specialize in what they do, which I think is great for the client. So having a buyer specialist means that you have an agent who focuses specifically on working with buyers. As I mentioned before, a listing transaction and a buyer transaction are very, very different. So I think it's great if you can work with a buyer specialist when you are looking to buy a home and work with a listing specialist when you are listing a home. I think that's ideal. And so teams often do have those different roles. And, um, and then the administrative piece, you know, again, they're on a team. Ideally, people will be able to focus in their wheelhouse and do a great job for the team in their role. How big is the team? is a question that I would ask because I think that the bigger the team gets, the less in touch the lead agent is possibly with what's going on on the ground level. So for me, as an agent with a small team, I know everything that is going on with all of my team members and I am in very close contact with everything, every transaction and every part of every transaction. And so I am able to make sure that the quality that we expect at Home by Mason is delivered to our clients because we are small. In a bigger team, of course, you know, the you intimacy might, goes away. You might lose some quality for quantity there. All agents, as I discussed earlier, should provide you that consultation that we talked about at no cost and no obligation. And they should be able to do it either in person or virtually. Whoops. And at that consultation, the realtor should be able to talk with you about what makes them different than other realtors. So that's another question that I would ask is how are you different than the average realtor? What do you do differently? And at Homes by Mason, so this is an example that we definitely, our tagline is actually, you know, there's a difference in realtors and it matters. And so we can point to, and these are pictures here of some of the examples and some of the ways that we do things differently than other realtors. So if a realtor does things differently, they should have examples to show you of what they do differently. So again, ask to see those examples. Don't just take their word for it. And how they work with you is another important factor and this is another way that at Homes by Mason we um, we say that we are different because as I mentioned we treat our clients like family. We do this because we care and we treat every transaction as if it was our own personal transaction. We want to get the best deal for our clients because we would want that for ourselves. So there are some realtors who are just transactional who just you know it's more about their commission than it is about doing the right thing for the client. Unfortunately, that's the reality. And so uh, you, you know, again, you want to interview realtors to try to ascertain how they're going to work with you and how they're different. So I've touched on these. Here's just kind of a list of some questions that you could ask. I think I've mentioned all of these, but I do point out here, don't be shy. This is an important decision with significant financial implications. You are going to be selling or purchasing probably your biggest financial asset. So do an interview of realtors and ask important questions. So in which neighborhoods or areas do you specialize? How many listings or buyers, right? Remember the transaction that you're doing. Have you closed, not just worked with in the past 12 months? What are your statistics? As we talked about, average days on market or percent sold price to original list price. What do you do beyond putting a sign in the yard and putting it on the MLS when you're selling a home? Do you guarantee your services? Some realtors do have guarantees. So ask about that and make sure that you understand what the guarantee is. Ask for references of past clients. And again, specific to your type of transaction and or your market so that you can try to get a realtor with the right market knowledge for you. And that is what I have 
prepared for tonight. I um, also appreciate Kristen mentioning this um, aspect about the admin team. Um, it's kind of like, you know, having a doctor. Um, you know, I have, I've had great doctors in the, in the, in the past, but their staff, I just couldn't get past. I mean, their staff was just very poor service. So if you have a staff that's supporting that doctor, that is not adequate. It is not up to snuff with what's expected in caring for a patient. Or if you have a physician that you're looking into, what kind of surgeries is he doing? Does he do them every day? How many surgeries does he do? It's the same thing. I, I, I compare it to a realtor. So I really appreciate you mentioning the, the staff. I think those are great points, Rebecca. Thank you for sharing that. Really mm -hmm. great points and good comparisons there. I was about a little bit long, but uh, again, as I said in the beginning, this is a really important topic. So, you know, buying or selling your biggest financial asset is not something that you should take lightly. And again, like I said, while you might know someone that you trust who's a realtor, I would advise not just stopping there, right? There are a lot of other factors to consider. Um, besides just that trust factor. Trust is important, but there are a lot of other pieces that are important yep. as well. And so hopefully this gave you a fuller picture of what things mm -hmm. to look for, what to expect in your realtor, and what things to look for, and how to identify those things in a realtor. So if you had any questions afterwards, you're more than, you know, uh, welcome to send them to, you know, me at We Do More at Homes by Mason or just email Kristen. Right. Uh, we'll Here's get right back with you you will actually either get Rebecca or me. So we have it set up on our team where if I'm not available, then Rebecca hopefully will get the call or get the email and be able to respond um, even if I'm not available. So Perfect. we have it set up that way. So we really appreciate you joining us. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now.